All right, Mark here, and today we are unboxing the Roku Premiere. Um, now this is of their current line. Uh, they recently kind of ditched the numbering scheme that was kind of convoluted, and they went with a whole new line of named Rokus from the Express all the way on up to the Ultra. The Roku Premiere is kind of their middle of the line. They have a Roku Premiere that's one step up from that. This is probably kind of like the Roku 2, Roku 3 um, of the previous generation. So this is their middle of the line model, but it is capable of 4K Ultra HD without HDR. This is not an HDR compatible. Um, so if you have a 4K with HDR, you'll want to go with the Roku Premiere Plus. Um, but here we're checking out the regular Roku Premiere. Um, just taking a tour around the box. Basically we have the requisite picture of the device on there and these, um, I've heard these um, Premiere models kind of refer to as hot plates. They're a little bit bigger than the previous generation Rokus which were kind of um, like little, kind of bigger than a hockey puck but still kind of small like that. Um, basically, like most Roku devices, basically you plug in the HDMI, connect it to your internet, and start streaming. It is pretty easy to set up. I've been a Roku person um, probably since like 2011. Um, I think my first one was a Roku XD, um, kind of a really old model. Um, I've had Roku 2s, Roku 3s of different generations. Um, the ill-fated Roku SD from Black Friday a couple years ago, which was basically a Roku one. Um, and basically now I'm checking out the Premiere. Um, basically all the spiel, what's included, the uh, player, um, the um, remote and channel shortcut buttons. Now with this um, player, it doesn't have the point anywhere remote, the um, RF, um, either Bluetooth or um, Wi-Fi direct remote. It's basically IR only remote, which is kind of crummy. I really like my Roku 3s where they have the Wi-Fi direct remote with the headphone jack, um, but this one does not have it, but I'm not really all that worried about it. Um, comes with a couple of AAA batteries in the box and the power adapter. You will need an HDMI cable but go on Monoprice or Amazon or any place you can pick up a fairly um, high quality cable for pretty cheap. Um, you'll want it to be um, a high speed HDMI ca uh, cable capable of 4K if you have a 4K TV. Um, if you want 4K content, um, if you want 4K anything, you need to have a 4K TV and you need to have something like Netflix or Amazon with 4K content. Um, you also need broadband internet and a wireless router. This does not, um, as I understand it, have Ethernet on it or a USB port. Another couple of things that were taken out of this model that I missed from having like my Roku 3s, but anyways. Um, and then the pretty glamour shots on the back. Easy setup, well, I'll be the judge of that later on. 4K Ultra HD, quad-core processor. This is supposed to be a pretty speedy uh, model and 3,500 plus channels. Vast majority of them are kind of kind of crappy, but they do have, in my estimation, the best um, smart device channel lineup of any device I've used. You know, Sony's smart TVs, Android TV, um, all those different devices, and I just like this. The interface is so much more fluid. Um, I like the layout. It's clean. It's got a great lineup of channels, I mean, look at all these things um, that I just don't think any other um, smart TV device matches. Um, this is the model 4620R, um, and then the standard legalese on the bottom. So let's go ahead and dive into it. I already basically cut the tape open, and I kind of real briefly took this apart. Um, but I wanted to kind of have my mise en place, kind of like a real TV chef when I took this thing apart. And basically we have the Roku itself, which is a hot plate. <laughs> it's big. It's definitely bigger than my old Roku 3. 
Um, but, I mean, if you're going to have this out by your TV, and you're going to have to have it out by your TV, you can't stick it um, really back up behind your TV because it doesn't have um, RF, Wi-Fi Direct, or Bluetooth remote um, bundled with it. Um, you know, if you're setting this on a TV stand, you know, it's not that much bigger. And, you know, it's a big plastic puck that's meant to be kind of set and forget. And so um, I don't find the bigger size all that troublesome. Um, this doesn't come standard. This I'm just covering up my serial number. Um, basically, you know, it's a Roku. You got the requisite little purple flippy tab that serves no purpose other than branding. Um, and then pretty bare bones, you have only an HDMI and a power cable. You don't have Ethernet, you don't have a micro SD card, um, which hopefully they put enough storage in here. I'm always getting the, um, the warnings on my Roku 3 saying that I'm running out of storage space and I need to insert an SD card um, for additional space so it doesn't have to reload channels. So hopefully they put enough under the hood here. Um, but yeah, no Ethernet, no micro SD, no um, USB, no component, composite, no nothing basically. HDMI and power. Um, what I did notice before when I was taking this out to um, Dutch the label here in a little bit is there is a little, little stubby kind of pimple of a button down in the bottom here that is um, the reset button. Um, and I never really looked at the bottom of any of my other <laughs> Roku's to see if they had a button like this before, but I did notice it on this device that it does have a little reset button on the bottom, which is kind of nice. I mean, it's a nice design to put it underneath it because, you know, it's kind of out of the way and it's there if you need it, but, um, but yeah, so it's pretty bare bones if I take the plastic off. It's the, this kind of plastic that really drives me nuts because it comes apart not all nice and in one piece but protecting the nice kind of glossy outer finish to the kind of flat matte top with the inset Roku design. Um, if we dig further in to this box we'll see the quick start guide with a Sling TV offer that's probably no different than any other offer Sling puts out during the course of the year, but I do really love Sling TV, so I recommend checking it out. And very light, very basic remote. Um, doesn't have the motion controls like the Roku 3 or any of those um, game-centric generations have, um, so it doesn't have the kind of the Wii hand strap. Um, very light, very basic, and mine has shortcuts for Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, and Sling. So unlike my previous generation Roku 2 that has RDO, which I don't think really even exists anymore, um, it's a nice light, semi-slim um, remote battery compartment where your two AAA batteries live, and your IR blaster. Again, not um, point anywhere remotes. You have to pretty much use an IR. Um, it's not RF, it's not Bluetooth, it's not Wi-Fi Direct. It's basically just a basic remote. But, you know, if you want a point anywhere remote, then upgrade to the Ultra. Um, and then in here, we have the power brick and two Duracell. Ooh, nice name brand AAA batteries. The power brick, Roku branded. The um, output is 12 volt, 1.0 amp. Um, and the polarity is positive, I think. I can never really tell that. Um, but standard, you know, Roku power brick. Um, that's slotted to the side, two prong. Um, kind of uh, offset. Um, or raised a little bit, um, but usually, <laughs> until recently, I never um, seemed to have enough um, transformer um, slots in my uh, power strip to handle all these different 
uh, bricks like these, but now I do. So, anyway, it's a nice semi slim, um, good power brick like that. So, that is basically what's in the box for the Roku Premiere. Um, it should be pretty speedy. Can't wait to hook it up and give it a try, but if it's anything like any of my other Rokus, it should be a pretty solid performer with um, lots of good streaming ahead.